You've invested in an ultraviolet disinfection system to make sure the well or lake water at your home cottage or cabin is bacteria free for your family. But after a year of use, it's beeping to remind you it's time to replace that lamp. Now, what's involved in terms of replacing that lamp? Is it something you can do yourself or do you need a licensed plumber? How do you know what replacement lamp you need? And isn't there a timer up here? How do you reset that timer? Well, I'm going to explain it all to you starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. This video is for the rural home cottage or cabin owner that wants to replace the ultraviolet disinfection lamp themselves to save the money and hassle of hiring someone else to do it. Now, you can easily order the replacement lamp from our e-commerce store, waterestore.com. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. But how difficult is it really to do it yourself? Well, I'm going to guide you through the whole process using this Viqua VH410 as an example. I'm going to share with you all of my tips and tricks. Now, before we get into this, if you're not 100% sure about how these systems work, check out my YouTube video. I'll put a link in the description down below. So before we get started, you obviously need to have that replacement lamp. So to find out the model number of the replacement lamp for your system, check the manual. Now, if you don't have the manual anymore, a lot of systems will have a sticker on the side, like this Viqua VH410, that tells you exactly which replacement lamp you need. Now, if you don't have that, it may very well tell you the, what model number UV system you have. You can always email that, that to us, info at waterestore.com, and from there we can figure out which replacement lamp you need. But there are systems out there that don't even tell you what model number the system is. So it makes it extremely difficult to figure out which replacement lamp you need. So these systems, these are Exolite systems. They're often sold under the, the Purifiner name or the, under the Water Depot name. And they're very difficult to determine which replacement lamp you need. Fortunately, I've made a YouTube video that'll help you figure all that out. And again, I'll put a link in the description down below. Definitely check it out if you've got one of those systems. If after that you still haven't figured out which replacement lamp you need, no problem. Just take a picture of your system, email it to me at info at waterestore.com. We'll identify the system for you and email you a link to the, to the correct replacement UV lamp. So before you start, you need to have a few things ready. Obviously that replacement UV lamp. I also suggest you have a replacement sleeve available just in case. Just in case you crack the other one when you're removing it to clean it. Just in case you set it aside and step on it or something like that. You got to realize if there's that UV sleeve is compromised, your family isn't going to have any water in your household until you get a replacement. So it's always a good idea to have a spare on hand. You're also going to need some soapy water because you're going to be cutting off the water uh, when you're doing this whole process. You need some CLR or vinegar, something to clean the quart sleeve. You're going to need some uh, some gloves or some nice clean rags for handling the new uh, lamp and the new, and uh, after you've cleaned the sleeve. And you're going to need a bucket to capture the water and some nice clean rags for cleanup. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to shut off the water. So somewhere before the pre-filter for the ultraviolet disinfection system, there's going to be a shut off. So you just if it's a ball valve like this one here, just turn it 90 degrees to uh, shut off the water. So I'm just gonna remove this to make a little more space uh, while I'm showing you this. So once you've done that, then you're gonna go somewhere in the house and uh, uh, run some water to release the pressure in the whole system. So you just run some water for usually 20 or 30 seconds and you'll see it flows right down to a dribble and uh, that's good enough. So somewhere after the system, you should have another ball valve shut off. And uh, so again, you're gonna shut that off and that keeps the whole house from draining back through when you open up the UV system. Once you've completed that, unplug the system. I find it usually works best if you unplug it from this end. So we'll pull that plug out. And then it's best to wait a few minutes to let the UV lamp cool down before you handle it. And then the next step is you're going to want to remove the lamp. So with this uh, VH410, VH200 is the same way. There's two clips here, you just clip them together and pull up and that releases the lamp and you can see the lamp comes up straight with with the connector here so this one just slides straight on so you can just wiggle the cap a little bit to remove it and then you pull the lamp straight up all right and again you don't want to handle handle the lamp with your bare hands so have a cloth or a paper towel like i do here handy so you can set it aside once you've pulled that out there's two caps one at each end so you're going to want to remove those caps. So before you do that, 
You're going to want to put a bucket underneath to catch any water that's inside that's going to leak so it doesn't make a mess. So you can see there's a spring here, so make sure you don't lose that spring. So I put my finger inside the sleeve here to make sure it doesn't slide out because we want to make sure the, the sleeve doesn't slide out the bottom and uh, break on the floor. And then you see there's an O-ring at the top and the bottom. So I usually just apply some pressure up and down, rocking back and forth, and that um, loosens the O-rings. See the O-ring here from the sleeve? So again, you pull the sleeve straight out. So if you have some hard water deposits and that on the sleeve, it may be difficult to get out because that scale builds up on the outside of the sleeve. I've had a couple that have been extremely difficult to get out because um, it hadn't been serviced properly for a long time. And when I say properly, people had been replacing the UV lamp, but they hadn't been cleaning the quartz sleeve. And that's very important because <laughs> if you just replace the lamp, without cleaning the quartz sleeve, and the quartz sleeve is dirty, that creates a curtain that blocks all of the light. So you might as well not even bother replacing the UV uh, lamp because it's not going to do a job anyway. So then the, it's best to clean this with uh, vinegar, CLR, or some kind of a, um, a product like that that removes scale. Once you've cleaned all that up, and you need to get it 100% clean, just like a brand new one like this one here. If you can't get it 100% clean, then you need to replace that uh, sleeve because it's just not going to work. So, uh, and that's another good reason to have a, a spare sleeve on hand when you're starting this whole process. All right, then once you've cleaned it, and again, I'm only handling it at the very end. I'm only handling it at the very end with my uh, bare hands, right? So that part isn't going to be in front of the light. So then what you do is you just slide it back in there and again make sure it's perfectly straight it doesn't bind because the the quartz sleeve is actually quite fragile and then you can feel around at the bottom for the the sleeve as it's coming through i poke my finger inside the hole at the bottom and then i slide the o-ring onto the the bottom and the top it's a good idea to wet the o-ring just with water and then you want to protrude the sleeve equidistant at the top and at the bottom. So it's about a half of an inch. And again, make sure that spring is there. Feed the string, spring in through the sleeve. And then you can tighten it up on the bottom. And do the same. Oh, here's the, the one at the top. So then I, I tighten them both at the same time, and these are only hand tight. Don't use a wrench on them, you don't need it, and you'd risk um, cracking that, uh, that quartz sleeve. All right, and then you grab your, your new lamp. So again, if you look at the end of the lamp, you can see that it's keyed. The, the pins are different lengths, so keep that in mind. So then we slide it back in. So again, you can handle the ends the ceramic ends with your bare hands and you'll see this is where the spring comes into play is um, you can see it, it's here and it also if like I say if um, if there was ever a time that you let go of it it would help cushion the fall as as the lamp comes comes down and then so again we need to make sure that this is keyed the same way Slide that in there. And as I'm doing, you need to wiggle it a little bit to make sure they line up. And then make sure you shove the, the uh, lamp all the way into the fitting at the top, the electrical fitting. And then match it up with the tabs on either side. Push it down. You need to push it down until you hear a click. All right, there it goes. Okay, so what's happened is that the timer was probably beeping. This timer counts down, starts off at 365 days, and then counts down till it's time to, to uh, basically uh, zero to tell you that it's, um, that it's time to replace that lamp. If it shows A3, that means it's past zero. So uh, keep that in mind. So then what you need to do is you need to reset that timer when you power this back up. So once you replace the UV lamp, then this is your electrical connection. The other end would of course be plugged into the wall. And then there's a button on the side here. So you hold down that button, plug this in, 
And what happens, you'll get a long beep, and then you'll see this says, um, it'll show reset, and then it'll show 365. Once it shows 365, I usually count to five, and then let go. And that resets the whole system, powers up the lamp. Once you've powered up the lamp, then, now, Normally, you would be replacing this filter at the same time. I'm not going to explain that uh, process in this video. I'll put a link in the description down below on uh, on a video on how to replace the filter at the same time. And then once you've done that, again, I'll put this back in here. And uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to partially open the inlet water from here. Okay, you don't want to jam it open all the way. So, this, so this ball valve, you would open it just partial, partially, you let water flow through, and then you check for leaks. Make sure there's no leaks. If there's no leaks, then you can open this up all the way. Of course, you're making sure that the, the, the UV lamp is on. It's showing 365. It's in service. And then you open up the water downstream, and then let the water flow through. Open up a faucet somewhere fairly close nearby, and you're going to see sputters of air coming through. Let that sputter and let the water flow until um, you get a, a smooth flow go going through. And warn everyone in the household that the first toilet flush and that kind of thing, you might get some gurgling and some bubbling and some uh, stuff going on. Now, if your UV system was shut off for a period of time, or for some reason you fear that there may have some um, back water with bacteria is downstream of the ultraviolet disinfection system as part uh, um, before you replace this UV lamp, then you need to disinfect the whole system. And again, I've got a great YouTube video that shows you how to disinfect the plumbing downstream of your ultraviolet disinfection system. I'll put a link in the description down below. So can you replace your UV lamp yourself? Absolutely. Just follow the advice in your manual and the tips and tricks I've presented to you today and you'll have no problem whatsoever. Click here for your next video on ultraviolet disinfection and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, put them down below.